my name is Mr. Asbury and this is another tricky maths question. And wow, this one looks super tricky. We've got an identity followed by an equation to solve, followed by an integral to do. Um, so the reason why I picked this one is because I believe that uh, trig identity followed by trig equation is the most common topic um, because it's come up every single year and they absolutely love giving these types of questions so it's one that you really need to feel comfortable doing and this one looks really tricky you've got lots going on here so let's get into it okay um, so the first thing I always do with a trig um, identity is I'll pick which side am I going to do am I going to do the left hand side or am I going to do the right hand side well the right hand side hasn't got a lot of sauce to it left hand side looks nice and juicy so let's do the left hand side so I will write it out and then I'm going to start tackling um, this sort of uh, how I'm going to rearrange it to make the right hand side. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write it as a single fraction because having two separate fractions is not normally uh, useful. So a single fraction will have a denominator of sine x cos x, just timesing those two denominators together. And then we're going to cross multiply. So the this term here, the left term, will become cos 2x needs to be multiplied by cos x. And the right hand term will be sine 2x multiplied by sine x. Okay, perfect. So now that's a single fraction, much easier to work with and much easier to find to try and get this in terms of uh, what the right hand side is, cosec x. Okay, now if we look at the right hand side, you can see that the input is just a single x. So really, I want to be dealing with trig functions that have an input of just x. And at the moment, these ones here have an input of 2x, so they're not particularly helpful. So let's use our double angle formulas to substitute those out. Well, as you know, I'll write them down here. Uh, cos 2x can be written as uh, cos squared x minus sine squared x or it could be written as 2 cos squared x minus 1 or 1 minus 2 sine squared x whereas sine 2x only has one um, expansion which is 2 sine x cos x okay so those are our double angles that we should know off by heart um, now I don't know which one to do for cos 2x at the moment so what I'm going to do is I'm just not going to do it. I'm just going to leave it there and I'm going to see if I substitute in this sine 2x, uh, is that going to help me? Well, if I sub in sine 2x and then times it by sine, I'm going to get 2 sine squared x cos x. And again, that's all been divided by sine x cos x. Okay, so that has helpful because every term has a cos x in, so I could divide every term through by cos x. Okay, and now hopefully it's quite easy to see which, um, which substitution I'm going to do for cos 2x. It's going to be, have you got it? Which one it is? It's going to be this one because this one is going to cancel out nice and neatly with the 2 sine squared x, which is already there. So I'm going to get minus 2 sine squared x when I sub in for cos 2x, and I'm going to get plus this sine, uh, this 2 sine squared x already. And that's all over sine x, which leaves me with just 1 over sine x, which is, of course, cosec x. So brilliant, we have done part A, and I will move on to part B. Okay, great. Part B, and then uses this word here, hence, which means I do need to use part A in my solution. If I don't use part A, I'm not, well, I'm not doing what they've asked me to do. Um, but luckily, this is a straight swap, because this left-hand side is exactly what is going inside this bracket. So rather than using that, I'm going to use cosec instead. Uh, I, want a, I want a wiggly line like that. Perfect. Uh, so I can rewrite this out as cosec squared x is equal to 6 cot, uh, whoops, sorry, 
Uh, we're no longer X's. The swap has been made. We are Theta's. Six cot Theta minus four. Okay, lovely. So that is the um, equation I need to solve. And we need to swap out this cosec using our, um, using our identity. Now, if you don't remember the identity, then you're not alone because I never remember it either. But what I do remember is, of course, sine squared plus cos squared is equal to 1. Now, uh, I want a cosec squared. So to get a cosec, I need to divide through by, I need to divide 1 by sine squared. So let's do that for every term here in order to keep the equality. And this tells us that we have 1, because sine squared over sine squared is 1. Cos squared over sine squared is the opposite of tan squared, so it's the inverse. So the reciprocal of tan squared is cot squared. And that's equal to cosec squared. Okay, so if you're ever in doubt, we can do that. You can also divide through by cos squared as well, and that gives you uh, tan squared plus 1 is equal to sec squared. Um, so let's swap this out then. So this becomes 1 plus cot squared theta is equal to 6 cot theta minus 4. Let's write this as a quadratic, so getting all of our terms onto one side. Um, and that will be plus 5, I believe. Uh, let's double check that. That's correct. Yep, good. Okay, so this can factorize, which is very nice and helpful, uh, to minus 1 and to minus 5. Okay, great. We don't need to worry about the range because, um, well, the range of cot and tan are all real numbers. So it's not like sine and, and cos are uh, trapped between minus 1 and 1. Uh, it's not the same for tan. Uh, so cot is equal to 1 is fine. And cot is equal to 5 is fine. Both of those will give solutions. Um, we will then take the reciprocal of both sides. So that becomes tan is 1 over 1, which is obviously just 1. And here tan theta is the reciprocal. Uh, so 1 over 5. Okay, lovely. Um, and now we have to go to our calculator to do these, so give me a second. Okay, and there we go, so I've just done inverse tan on my calculator, and of course 1 gives you pi over 4, and a fifth will give you 0 0.197. Now, quick check for the range. The range says it's in between um, theta and pi over 2, so if I were to add... Um, uh, 180, which is what I need to do to get the second uh, solution, or in this case, because we're radians, add pi. Um, these are going to be, of course, bigger than pi over 2. So these are the only two solutions. So this is me done for that part of the question. Great. So let's move on to the next part. Okay, uh, part C. Uh, we've got integration. Sort of come out of nowhere. Um, it says using the result from part a or otherwise well i think i'm going to use the result for part a seeing it's a two mark question um, i don't want to overcomplicate it so the integral of pi between pi over four and pi over six of this horrible thing here which we know is also cosec so it's just cosec x uh, times through by cot x uh, dx uh, and also, again, it's a two-mark question, so I shouldn't be having to do some really tricky integral here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my formula book, and I'm going to look in the integration section. Now, is there anything there which is helpful? Uh, not really, to be honest. There's nothing there which is helpful at all. So uh, I'm not going to panic, but instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the differentiation section. Because remember, differentiation is, of course, just the inverse of integration. So I get this in the differentiation section. Um, now, okay, this is looking a little bit more promising because we've got this over here. Like this. So that tells me that um, cosec differentiates to minus cosec cot. 
So therefore, minus cosec cot integrates to cosec. So I can use that to my advantage, and I could say that if minus cosec cot different integrates, sorry, to cosec, then positive cosec cot must integrate to negative cosec. So in fact, when I integrate this, I get negative cosec x. And that is again between pi over 4 and pi over 6. Uh, so what is negative cosec x? Well, that is, of course, negative 1 over sine x. Uh, pi over 4 and pi over 6. Now, when I sub in pi over 4, that's the same as 45 degrees, and I get 1 over root 2. So the negative reciprocal of that will be just negative root 2. And then we're taking away, because of course we're integrating, we take away the lower bound. And uh, when I sub in pi over 6, that is 30. Sine of 30 is a half, so the negative reciprocal of that is minus 2. So my final answer will be we have a positive 2 minus a root 2. And there we have it. Now I really hope you enjoyed that. If you did, check out my other A-level math tricky questions. And uh, leave a thumbs up. Bye for now.